Hello and thank you for joining us on this video. The company did a video last week based upon our video the week prior about the battery plant. So Bill gave a lot of uh, updates on production in the main plant and the battery plant, as well as questions and answers from, uh, from the video that came up from the, through the membership. Um, in the video, if you, if you don't see it, it is posted on the company website as of this morning uh, under Facebook. But if you don't get Facebook, some of the highlights include the main plant will start production again April 1st. They are going to start bringing people in in early March. More will come in every week, more of our members every week um, as they start to shake things up and get the lines running. The battery plant will likely see our members come in in early March as well. And I believe the week of March 25th, they want to start production in the battery plant and go to three shifts, I believe, within a month. So by the end of April, they're planning on going three shifts already in parts of the battery plant. Um, due to the time crunch, things are going to start happening very quickly. Regardless of how this vote happens, we'll explain what's going to happen right after. Um, but here's a rough, line, a rough outline of what's going to happen. The battery jobs are likely all going to go up on Friday. The C-shift reduction, which Bill talked about, uh, the company is reducing C-shift, will take place right after the battery postings. By posting the battery jobs first, we believe we'll reduce the bumping. About two-thirds of all the required bumping should clean itself up. Um, after that, we'll reduce C-shift. We'll then post work charts for all members to see where they're sitting. And then we'll begin the second and third rounds of postings. So everybody will know where they are before the second and third rounds of postings. Um, we have two options for this video uh, for the members to vote on um, that we want to talk about. We are trying to be very transparent with both options so that each person can understand what's going on and make a decision on what uh, best suits them. Okay, option one, rotating layoffs. Just to start off with, the company will not agree to bring in the top 400 and guarantee them full-time work. They are currently paying over 1,100 members sub, which is a lot more costly than purifying the layoff, so they will not do both this time. So right now there is no top 200, 400 or anything else that are guaranteed work. With this option, however, if you would like to and you are retirement eligible up to and including January 1st, 2025, you can sign up and go off work immediately and ride out your ESA and retire upon the new, uh, the new contract, which would see you get the signing bonus plus the uh, ESA payout plus the uh, uh, pension bump up. Um, this includes any members who have not yet been laid off, such as pilot people who would like to start the layoff uh, and go off work and start collecting their 35 weeks. This potentially would be very favorable to our former EMD members if you are looking to retire. With this option, you would retain your job of record. Or another option within the rotating layoffs is you could put your hand up right now and choose to remain off work until October. And then you would return also with your job of record. You would still qualify for the signing bonus, um, but at the end of this, you would return to work. Um, we do believe the two options that we are talking about will create a lot of holes within our membership, a lot of, uh, a lot of holes uh, on the work charts. So our senior members, like they did before, will be offered by seniority to come in and work full time. We do believe a lot of people are going to be attracted to this. So hopefully the most senior members, hopefully one or 200 of them could come in and keep on working full time or at least get that option. No one will be forced to give up their job of record in any of these options. Um, however, we need everyone to understand if you take either of these two options and the company goes to two shifts, there is a possibility that they call you back to work. The ultimate goal, of course, is to get back to two shifts that would get everybody working or even get to three shifts with new hires. But if the company turns around and tells us at some point in two weeks, in two months, in six months that we are two shifts, then starting with the people who took the layoffs first, you will be recalled to work, followed in seniority by the people who took the um, option to retire. So there is a chance that it could happen. We do have a signed agreement on this, and this option for rotating layoffs ends October 1st. In writing also, regardless of what's going on in the plant, you must come back to work prior to October 14th if you choose, a layout, if you choose to remain off work. So that just protects everybody. We're going to go into a contract. We should get good raises. We might get some other benefits. So you have to come back to work no later than October 14th because this deal will expire on October 1st. Okay. This is also extremely important. If you do decide that we, you would like to stay off of work and do one of those two options, you must come to the union hall next week, 
Monday to Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and personally sign up at the Union Hall if you, want, if you want one of these options. If you're out of province or cannot make it at all, we can do it electronically. Please just email me or call me and we'll set that up as well. Option two would be to purify the seniority in the plant. By the company numbers, this would be the top 615 people needed to run one plant in the main shift and up to three shifts in the battery plant to start with. Um, by our seniority list as of right now, the 615th person's seniority number is 5565. If we do go with this option, approximately two thirds of all members would lose their job of record. We would not have three shifts of QC or materials or paint, etc. Um, but we would have hundreds of holes in assembly and the weld shop. So we would need a lot of those people would be forced to go to the assembly lines or to the weld lines. That's just the way the, line, the numbers would work out. Um, you could still take the ESA or uh, for, to retire or quit immediately or within the next two weeks just because you're going to be recalled to work. So if you're at 35 weeks, you could decide to quit immediately or retire immediately. You do not get the pension increase, um, et cetera, but that option would still be there, but you would have to know within the next couple of weeks. If the battery jobs do not get filled in the postings under this method, um, whoever's a junior people starting from 615 down would be forced into the battery plant to fill those positions. Um, those outside of the top 615, you would have recall rights for three years or the length of your seniority, whichever is greater. In closing, I'd like to say a few things. Looking back over the past three years, our plant has been in a very difficult position. We have had more downtime than any other plant in North America. First COVID, then chip shortages, then a retool, and now finally part shortages. GM has agreed to allow our plant to continue to rotate if our members vote that way. The rotation costs GM a lot more money than going straight to purification. GM put over a billion dollars into our plant and hundreds of millions more into our battery facility. They are trying to keep everyone employed. At some point, we will be two shifts again in the main plant. GM is betting a lot of money it will happen sooner than later by trying to keep everyone. We have heard that before, but with the investment that we have, at some point, it will come. And one thing we know about auto, it can go up as fast as it goes down. We could be two shifts again in two or three months. However, everyone knows that's a long story that we've been that we hear over and over. Not knowing is likely the hardest part. We had literally hundreds of calls over the past two months from our membership. Everything from follow the contract and purify to continue to rotate with a larger variety of reasons for both. We have come over the past three years through some very tough years. Years that we expect GM to help compensate us for when we're at bargaining this fall. But now the choice is up to each individual. You each have your reasons and we will start voting today and conclude on Thursday. Regardless of the outcome, the members will speak and we will move on. Watch the website, information should be coming quickly and the postings for the battery plant in either scenario are likely starting Friday. The company again did do a video last week it's on Facebook. Hopefully you can find it. It has all kinds of information, not only in the battery plant, but on the main plant about returning to work, about timelines, and a lot of the questions are answered from the battery plant, about 20 questions just on questions that our members had regarding the battery plant. Good morning. I'd like to give a quick overview of Simply Voting and the voting process that will take place for this vote. Uh, there's a Canadian firm, Simply Voting Inc., has been hired as an independent third-party voting provider. In order to ensure privacy, ballots will be encrypted and stored anonymously on the Simply Voting Canada servers. Unifor 88, or Simply Voting, will not be able to access your ballot or your voting receipt. To vote online, you will receive an email with a unique password. Members are registered through the unique GM or GMIN badge number. Included in the email will also be a direct link which you can click on and vote or you can enter the information manually using the details provided in the said email. Please check your spam or junk mail folder also to make sure you're looking for the email. Uh, this is a production only vote, production member only vote. Only one vote per member will be allowed by the system. 
Local 88 or Simply Voting cannot even access the voting receipts or change the results. Simply Voting takes this very serious and various checks and balances are in place. Simply Voting uh, certifies all votes after they are completed. Although care was taken to ensure our voting list is accurate, the company provided us with the employee list. The online voting will be open at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, February 7th, 2024, and will close at 4 p.m. on Thursday, February 8th. For members that do not have a computer, cell phone, or require assistance, there will be a voting kiosk set up at the local union hall at 364 Victoria Street here in Ingersoll. The hours of the voting kiosk at the union hall will be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Thursday, February 8th, 2024. If you have any additional questions or concerns regarding voting or change of email address, please contact the email below, 88electionhelp at gmail.com. In closing, this is the same online voting process we have used in the past.